Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is he risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to our service for May 16th. This is Zion Lutheran Church in Pine City, Minnesota. I'm Pastor Kleppe. May 16th this year is the seventh Sunday of Easter, the last Sunday in the season of Easter. The 23rd is the Sunday of Pentecost. Uh, so we celebrate Easter one more time in the church. Uh, to lead us in our service uh, for the 16th, we will be using Divine Service Setting 1 from the Lutheran Service Book. We'll be singing hymns 807, 748, and 920, all from the Lutheran Service Book. We begin with the hymn. Ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. 
For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord.
first reading for the seventh Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 1. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and his brothers. In those days Peter stood up among the brothers, the company of persons was in all about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out, and it became, became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. So the field was called in their own language, Akeldam, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May his camp become desolate, and may there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to the resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph called Barsabbath, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them. And the lot fell on Matthias. And he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish.
Our epistle lesson from 1 John chapter 5. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he is born concerning his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne considering his Son. And this is the testimony that God gave us, eternal life. And this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked of him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
text for our consideration is our gospel lesson from Jesus' high priestly prayer, which is found in John chapter 17, where he says this of his people. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. This is our text. Forward, the light brigade, was there a man dismayed? Not though the soldier knew, someone had blundered. Theirs not to make reply, theirs not to reason why, theirs but to do and die. Into the valley of death rode the 600. Have you heard that before? It's a poem by Alfred Lord Tennyson, The Charge of the Light Brigade, which is about a battle during the Crimean War. A cavalry brigade rode into a valley that was surrounded by heavy artillery, and they were destroyed. History isn't exactly sure what happened, but there was certainly a miscommunication. The people that made the decision were unfamiliar with the valley. The people bringing the message got it wrong. Somehow, something happened, and hundreds of men died because they were foreigners in a strange land. Or consider Christopher Columbus. When he returned to Spain after his trip to America, he reported that he had landed in India. That's why Native Americans are called Indians. He didn't understand the language of the natives. He misunderstood. There was a miscommunication. It happens when you're a foreigner in a strange land. Often we in the church are misunderstood. We call a sin a sin, and the world tells us that we're being judgmental. We say that marriage is between a man and a woman, and the world tells us that we're narrow-minded. We proclaim the Bible to be the word of God, and the world tells us that we believe in myths. We proclaim the power and validity of the sacraments, and the world says that we practice ancient magic and rituals. It's like we're speaking a different language than everyone else. And the fact is, we are. We are foreigners in a strange land. We are not of this world. But before you become too concerned about that, just remember that we are not of this world because we belong to Christ. And he is not of this world. That's okay. Jesus is not of this world. In fact, Jesus is from heaven. He is not only not of this world, he's from far above this world. He's from heaven. He's the creator God. He's the son, the second person of the Trinity. When he created the world, he looked at it and he said, it's very good. But there was a problem. Shortly after that, Adam and Eve turned their backs on him and sinned. They listened to the devil and did exactly what God had told them not to do. In their sin, they were removed from their home, the Garden of Eden. They were separated from God. Because of their sin, they were forced to live where they didn't belong. They became foreigners. Their communication with God was disrupted. The people around them didn't understand them. Life became difficult, challenging, because they were removed from paradise. And paradise is where they belong. Heaven is where everyone belongs. God made us for heaven. He made us to be with him. But because of our sinfulness, heaven seems like it's not where we belong. We are very earthly. The sin of Adam and Eve has been handed down to us, and we've certainly committed our own sins since. We are strangers in a foreign land. And of course, those, who, those of us who listen to God, who try to follow him, who pay attention to his word and worship him, we don't fit in. Those of us who recognize that our citizenship is in heaven seem like strangers in the land. The world, those who don't know God, they don't understand us. We seem to them like foreigners. The world doesn't know us because it doesn't know Christ. 
The Apostle Paul once said that for him it would be far better if he were to die and go to heaven. He said it would be far better to be freed from the sinfulness of this world. Paul was sent by the church to go out into the world with the saving truth of Jesus Christ. Paul understood what it meant to be misunderstood. He knew what it was like to be rejected and even persecuted. I understand why Paul would think that it's better to die and go to heaven. It's hard to be a foreigner. It's hard to be misunderstood. It's hard to be a Christian in an unchristian world. Sometimes it's easy to think that heaven would be far better. It most certainly will be. But Jesus' prayer for us is that we are not taken from this world, but left in it. It is his intention that we live in this world as Christians, but not like the rest of the world. His intention is that we live in this world, but we are not of it. So God encourages us to live as foreigners in this strange place. He purposefully left us here. It's his idea. We are even sent into the world. We are his witnesses. Even if the world doesn't understand, even if the people around us think that the message of Jesus Christ is foolishness, God tells us to live by his word and proclaim his salvation to the world around us. But his prayer is that we are kept from the evil one, and his promise is that he's with us always, even to the very end. Jesus' prayer is that we are kept from the evil one. We are in the world, but we are his people. He loves us and encourages us and protects us, no matter what the world around us thinks. And the forgiveness of our sins never changes, and the gift of eternal life never changes. It's difficult living in a foreign land, and we do, but we are not the light brigade. We serve the God of heaven and earth. In the end, we win because our citizenship is in heaven, and that is far better. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people of In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all in need of our prayers, that they may dwell in your house all the days of their lives, and gaze upon your beauty manifested here in your word and sacrament. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the church on earth, as she calls and chooses men to serve in the apostolic office, that God's word would continue to grow and bear fruit, and that these men, like Matthias, would be faithful to their calling. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For all those who suffer persecution and have been forsaken by father, mother, and friends, that they may be taken into the Lord's keeping and fear no foe. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For our president, our governor, Congress, our legislature, and judges, 
that the Lord would teach them the testimony of truth and make them wise and effective in their offices. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all those who are sick and in distress, we name them now. That as they hold the Son of God in faithful hearts, they may also have eternal life and an answer for all their prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. Holy Father, accept the prayers we offer through your Son, our Savior, and keep us forever in your name and your word, that we may be one just as you are one. Sanctify us in the truth. Your word is truth. Who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Uh, becoming a little more normal. Uh, now recently our governor has made 
some changes to how things operate and, and it'll be a little uh, looser and we'll be able to uh, do some more things like we used to. We've tried to be uh, faithful to our calling and yet still obey our government as God's word commands us to do. Uh, and so you need to check with us uh, regularly if you want to know the changes that are coming, but I will try to announce them as we know them uh, on these videos as well. Our phone number here at Zion is 320-629-3683. Our webpage is zionpinecity.org, and we do have a Facebook page as well. May the Lord bless you. Thank you.